autism. What's going on, Square Nation? Dr. Shulman bringing you today's wellness wisdom. And we're going to dive into the uh, dicey territory of understanding the neuroemotional stresses related to autism. Um, disclaimer, this is not meant to diagnose, treat, or cure any ailment you might have. It's not intended to blame anyone for anything. We're providing this information for understanding, for a deeper sense of what's going on. Always remember that no one thing causes any one thing, and no one thing cures any one thing. So no one of these things is going to cause that, just like the MMR vaccine doesn't cause everything, just like, you know, it's toxicity, it's gut microbiome, it's stress and toxins and lions and tigers and bears, oh my. So take this with a grain of salt. Look at it as a perspective on how you can observe the people in your life who might be challenged with this. Um, anything's possible. So use these tools to help find this a way for this person to de-stress and, and sort of repattern themselves. So as you know, autism is considered a spectrum. Um, in the German New Medicine language, it's called um, a constellation like that in the stars. <clears throat> so there's several things that happen that sort of, if you remember like um, the perfect storm in the movie, like back in 91 when you had like, we got 28 inches of snow. I don't know. We got some ridiculous amount of snow in, in 91 on, on Halloween. Autism is like a perfect storm. The toxicity, the gut microbiome, the inability to detoxify things, the emotional stresses in the environment with the parent, with the pregnancy, all this stuff. So keeping in mind that it's a constellation. So there's things like territorial anger, territorial anger conflict. Um, so anger in your environment. So angerness, angerness, anger, bitterness, <laughs> made up a word, angerness. <laughs> all right, anyway, um, but it could be in the kindergarten class. It could be at home. It could be while the mother's pregnant. It could be anywhere. And so that's part of it. Um, it could be in, in the neighborhood. It could be in the town. It could be an extended family with a grandparent. Or, you know, it just, does, it just depends. There's um, a scare fright, so the child has experienced some type of fear and some type of great fright, like something is impending doom. Um, there's territorial fear, so the fear comes along with the scare fright and things of that nature. So all these things come together. There's um, an identity conflict, which is relevant here, where they, they don't know who they are, who are they supposed to be, are they in the shadow of someone else? Um, so we're going to we're dive into some of that stuff. But that, from a German New Medicine standpoint, it's a constellation. It's, it's, it's broad. Um, it's hard to nail anyone down because people want to say, like, this silver bullet caused this, right? It's the one thing causes one thing. It just doesn't work that way. So um, take it as you will. Um, so getting back to the conflict of the identity, the child perceives that they are, like, they have to live this exile like they are the, the person who has to be the, the one who lives out the exile in the genealogy. And that it, oftentimes, if you don't, if you don't have kids, uh, if you just observe this in someone else's kids, children are, are many meaning-making machines. They will take an idea, a concept that you think is innocuous, like benign, like doesn't mean anything, and it will like rock their world. Uh, I remember the time, I'll tell you a story, my, my daughter, was she's missing a bunch of teeth, um, super cute. And uh, she was giving me the jack o' lantern smile. She's like, ah, you know. I'm like, so you just, just close your mouth and smile with your, your lips closed. She interpreted that as I didn't like her smile. And when my wife told me that, I was like, just floored. I was like, how could she have come to that conclusion? It was a further reinforcement of like how a child can latch on to something when I'm just trying to get her to do a different face on a smile, on a picture, and she thinks I'm, I'm disliking her, disregard, you know. Like, that's just an example. So the power of a parent, man, I'll tell you what, <laughs> just word of the wise, if you're not a parent, if you're going to become a parent, if you are a parent, just do whatever you can to help your children heal because God knows we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I do dumb stuff all the time, but I apologize for it. So if that's all you can do is apologize for it, then uh, empower to jail. I apologize for it. So back to the task at hand. The child who experiences the autism spectrum, autism constellation, is feeling like they're in exile. Um, they feel like they have to adapt to everybody else's personality or they're, they have to just like fade into the environment. They're not entitled to be themselves. They live in fear of being themselves. Um, they, it's like their soul exiles. They, their ears hear and their brain processes, but um, they just don't have a voice. Like a lot of children are nonverbal. Um, now, there's a, it's a spectrum, right? So, so you have some people with Asperger's over here and then you have the completely nonverbal over here. I mean, I was talking to Emma a second ago about people I had the luxury of working with. Some people walk around and hit their heads on the wall. Some people are pleasant and joyful. Um, some people are not even diagnosed, but you can just see the tendencies. Um, great people. It's just we always want to wonder, 
the first instinct of a person that's uneducated on trauma says, what's wrong with them? But we have to take a step back and say, what happened to them? Okay, because we don't know. What happened during the pregnancy? What kind of things they inherit? What toxins do they have, um, whether it be water, air, food? P vaccines are well known to have toxins in them. I'm not here to crucify them. Just letting you know they are a form of a stress on the body, um, things like that. So um, not having a voice for the child because they don't feel like they're able to. So there's, you know, in the, in the research it talks about I'm not, I don't have the luxury of making mistakes, okay? So I have to be perfect is kind of the idea. And so if you don't speak, you can't say something wrong. If you don't act, uh, act out, you won't be punished. Um, in the uh, territorial fear conflict, it was related to kids when they're yelled at, when they're punished, they can literally, that can traumatize them. And hear me loud and clear, we can't as parents avoid all punishments and all, you know, losing our, our stuff, right? But knowing that if we can do it less, we can traumatize them less because the first two years of life is the most rapidly developing emotional part of the brain. And then, you know, basically from conception and when the brain develops in utero to about seven when the brain starts reasoning more, that's why kids start school at that age, they're almost all emotions. Like kids are, have big emotions. And for adults, especially for us who tend to spend more time up here than down here, we tend to not understand them. Um, but we were all that way at one point, one point until we got shut down and told we can't feel that way, can't act that way, can't express that way, weren't given a voice and stuff like that. So the children that are dealing with the spectrum are feeling like if I make a mistake, it's like death. Like mistakes are equal to death. So they don't say anything, they don't do anything. Um, and if they do something and they feel like they're, they're called on it or challenged on it or they feel like they're being punished, that's when, like, the little boy I can think of um, used to walk around and, like, if, if we challenge his behavior, he'd just start hitting his head against the wall because he was punishing himself. He, he was just shaming himself. And so these, these are the fundamentally powerful things that the messages we're sending to these children. Um, so we just have to be very mindful. You know, I don't believe in coddling children, um, but I also don't feel like beating them or <laughs> um, chastising them is, is effective either. So... Just know that a child that's, developed, that's dealing with autism spectrum, autism constellation, is dealing with fear of making a mistake, fear of that they're going to die if they make a mistake. So um, sometimes there can be resentment um, of a child toward a parent. It could be a parent that's emotionally de de detached or emotionally abusive or something like that. Um, there's usually a shock. We talked about the, uh, the scare fright. That's like the shock conflict. So usually it's a complement or a combination of these things that kind of hit the child, and then eventually um, it just starts messing with them. And if you understand that, you know, they feel responsible, children up until about the age of seven, and even after that, they still feel responsible for how adults react. Like my daughter, even though she's about to be seven in September, she still thinks I'm all men in the world. She thinks that I'm perfect, even though God knows where I'm at. But she thinks that because she thinks that's daddy. If if I get him, if he's upset with me, I could be kicked out of the clan. I could be cast away. I could be disowned. I could be pushed away, and then I'll be left with the wolves. And so my life depends on me not upsetting him. So I then feel like a bad person if he's upset, right? Same thing with uh, her mom. So for you as a parent or you who know someone, it's like we're not about condemning the parent because God knows I make mistakes. It's about becoming aware and just trying to do better. So, um, what else? Anything else? I mean, that, that's plenty for you to chew on. Okay. So let's let's just go with that. So, hopefully, you found this in exciting, curious, uh, uh, curiosity provoking, starting conversations, having conversations, understanding what's going on. We're not going to dive into all the rest of the crap that could be associated with this. It just help you understand the person, because the human being is what matters. Um, you can blame the vaccine or the toxin or the food or the gut microbiome if you want, but treat the person like a person and treat them with unconditional love and uh, amazing things happen. So hope you enjoyed it, and let us know what your comments below. I'm sure there's going to be some comments. So we look forward to them, all right? Let them rip, all right? Great, God. See you guys.